and then a few others that he all thinks they all belong to Russia anyway. So as he picks up these different ones, uh, these three, because last week we talked about the Antichrist is going to take over three kingdoms, and the ever seven of the ten are just going to fall right in order. And then he can do what he wants to do. So this could be a precursor. This could be his collection. He's not the Antichrist. Because you can't, you won't know the Antichrist until when? When he turns back. We might know it when he signs the peace treaty. We're going to know it when he breaks the peace treaty three and a half years later. Okay? So, actually, I was going to start this morning and say, what do y'all think about all those things? But, because last week we ended rather abruptly in the, we ended abruptly because I was upset. I was upset by something that's going to keep on going on out this afternoon and beyond. I, I, we were all here at the end of it, and I showed a, a, a picture around of the church I used to belong to. Yeah. Where they painted the steps yeah. with a rainbow. So that means that when I talked about that, we omitted some things, and that's the Antichrist and his numbers. Six, six, six. When I say that to you, what does that mean to you? Where do you think those numbers come from? It's the devil. Yeah, the numbers assign. This guy here, it's interesting. I like a lot of audio rights, but some of it. Blah, blah, blah. If you were to, I would ask you for the meaning of alphanumeric, what would you say? It's a, a keyboard or something that has both numbers and. Also, he gives you a weird, a, a different, slightly different definition. But when we're talking about to get arrived at 666, we've got to take letters or words that are correspond to numbers. Okay? For instance, if we're using English words and Arabic numbers, Arabic, yeah, they are Arabic origin, are numbers that we, the numerals we use. And I wanted to write my name, I would, would go 18 for R, O is 20, I think, and back to 2 for Robert, and 5 for E, 18, and then RT, that's 19, I guess. Q, R, S, T, no, that would be 20. Anyway, that means the O is less than 20. It goes back to 18. That's what that was, 16. But the point is that each letter has a number. But I get into a problem because will this be in Greek? It will be different. They have different numbers for it, OK? If it's Hebrew, how many, no, how many letters are there in the Hebrew alphabet? I don't know. I never went to Jewish school. <laughs> I think it's twenty, but I'm not sure. It's less than hours. It's it's different in each one. So I don't, I started to look through a lot of my books to come up with a good answer for you and show you how to do it. I have a couple charts in which they are shown in uh, Hebrew, but we try to do things in English. I don't think you can translate that. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's a wasted effort for me to go and try to do this unless I know what language it's going to be in and go from there. So 666 has meaning and in the last sentence of the uh, last verse of that it says this is wisdom like who understands to do this. I, I don't have enough wisdom or knowledge. I guess wisdom is a good use of knowledge and I don't have enough knowledge to do that. You, do any of you have some concepts on that? If you were a Jacksonville native, yeah. there was a bridge called the Costa Bridge. Which okay. Was the first bridge built over the St. John's River in Jacksonville. It's been torn down, it's been replaced. But the railroad run, ran beside, and there was a warehouse that had 666 six, six on it, <laughs> which was a patent coal, coal mask. But it was named 666. 
But so now every time you went over that bridge, you would see six, six, six. six. But yeah, nowadays, over, huh? but yeah. nowadays, if something is the number six sixty five, you'll see six sixty seven. Even the circular world knows yeah. not to use six six six. Well, we don't have a thirteen four one. That's true. Yeah. yeah. What was your explanation for that number? A coal company? Did you say it uh, was there? Was cough a coal patent medicine. Patent medicine. medicine. Cough medicine. It was a cold medicine. And they made it six six six. <laughs> Okay. The name of it. I wonder how successful they were with it because Christians would have to say, gee, that's going to huh? so be bad medicine. It's sold all over the South. <laughs> that's interesting. And maybe back then they didn't think too much of it. Yeah. Everything was beautiful. Well, Satan's been selling his 666 lately in different well, I just looked life. it up in the, in the, on my phone. It says, where did 666 come from? In the King James Version, the assignment of the number is phrased thusly, here is wisdom. Let he that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and the number is six hundred three score and six. Yep. It's the number so, of a man. That's what it says. But said. that still doesn't tell me who the man is or whatever. No. Oh, that's now, to be course, disclosed. My Bible's in, my Bible's well, it in does English. tell you. It tell you that he will come. For three and a half years, you'll see good, and in three and a half years, you'll be scared to death. <laughs> Where will you get your food for three and a half years? Have any of you in the last ten years looked at things that are happening and say, uh oh, it's time? And yeah, they've been saying that for two thousand years. I, I've heard a hundred years. Though. Yeah, well, I haven't, right. lived, I haven't quite lived that long, so. I, no, but if you look at history. You know, when the Civil War happened, they thought that was mm -hmm. the end. When World War I started, they thought that was the end. You know, and I'm sure when Hitler came, they thought that was the end. They thought he was I, I saw where somebody wrote an article about teenagers, how horrible they are. Mm -hmm. They don't do what they're told, but they're not mature enough. It was Aristotle. Yeah. yeah. I think Cicero was quoted at some point for the same statement. But the truth is that, yeah, we all believe that. And it's probably all true. There's a preacher on uh, television, if you were find a fellow by the name of uh, Stephen Furtick, and he was obviously a very natural person. He, I've never seen him in a suit or whatever. Of course, I don't do that anymore anyway. But I would say probably was a bike rider or something like that. But, image is what you get, a tough guy, but it turns out, but he's a good preacher, and he is preaching the gospel, as it should be, but he's got a son, apparently got a, a blog or something, and he's talking all kinds of wild, of illicit sex, drugs, guns, it's as though he has, has them himself, so the fellow preachers are on Mr. Furtick because of that. So our kids have been disobeying us forever, right? That's right. And but we'll this be, could also be the time of the Great Awakening. We, you know. Okay. Would you be kind enough, if you can, to tell us about the the Great Awakening? Now I know that we have people talking about that as a history event, but is it scriptural? You know, I'd have to study that a little bit, but I, you know, from what I've re read and understand about the Great Awakening, that many will come back to Christ in times of, we couldn't be any more sinful in America than what we are. Better. We are just, it's Better. awful. Better. <laughs> when that they thought it was the Great Awakening the, after 9-11, yes. so many came yeah. back. For three weeks, maybe. But, it was only <laughs> but that don't, it was a very short-lived one, yeah, like those you said. Yeah, the seeds that weren't planted. Well, we're about to away. talk about a great awakening in the chapter. Next one is 14. And let us go to that while we can. And if would someone like to read the first five verses for us, please? Chapter 14. The lamb. Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 140,000, having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of a loud thunder. And I heard the sound of the harpist playing in their harp. 
They sang as if there were a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they were not, for they are virgins. They are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. They were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And in their mouths was fine no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. I'm in trouble. Okay. <laughs> 144,000. Where do we see that number before? Way back. Well, that's the thing the Mormons have. They think they're... Well, they think they're... The, they're the, There's 144,000 of them in heaven, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Well, that's the Seventh-day Adventist friends who feel that they are going to be young missionaries from the Seventh-day Adventist church. <laughs> okay. They were, they were At any much. rate, a lot of people take claim for a lot of things, but the, oh, yeah. here we have a group, and it says they were sealed. Now, mm -hmm. one of my commentators says that earlier manuscripts say they were sealed in their forehead with the names of the Son and of the Father. Shorthand, right? Probably to the symbols. But they, they eliminated Jesus' name and just kept the Father's in the text. Of one, unless you have one that says that. Okay? I also have a text that says, by the way, when I, I, I tell you this, how do you feel about this? My wife critiques me, and she says, you know, you give too many options. Well, I feel part of it as a teacher is to share, look, I didn't write this book. And there are a lot of people who studied it before I did, and I, in order to teach, I depend on a lot of commentaries, a lot of studies, and then I, if I have an opinion, then I will tell you, I'll tell you, but I feel obligated to share some of that. Do you really, would you rather that, or would you rather I just say, this is the way it is? No, I like opinions. Well, you know. the whole thing is, how many opinions are there on Revelation? How many? 144,000. <laughs> I have a book on my bookshelf. I call it with my daughter and my granddaughter. It's this size, and it is all about Revelation. It is seven dead Adventist book, and what it is is they take verse by verse, and they might have 10 different commentators talking on each verse, okay? So I don't bother with that. I just set it aside because to filter all of those out, I don't have, have time for that. But there are lots of opinions on Revelations, you're right. And all I, I, I try to share what I think is germane to it and to show you that maybe all the details you don't have to be right on all the details to understand the fact that this is going to happen and that this is the end time. And what does that mean? If we talk about the end times, we're talking about judgment, right? Okay. And what is the result of judgment? Jesus Christ says, I come quickly and with me I bring my rewards, right? Okay. Well, when he comes the first time, the second time, well, he's going to come and he's going to have rewards. And we know that the, the judgment seat of Christ, he's going to hand out crowns, right? But you know, he's got some other rewards, okay? Some other judgments that are going to come, right? That's called the wrath of God, right? And as long as we understand that and understand that, in my opinion, this is the oh. hardest part for folks to understand. I, I cannot understand what I talk to, say, my grandchildren. They, they're independent people, they work hard. They've achieved a lot. They don't need a lot of help in certain ways, I guess. But I'll talk to them about the end times, and at the end of you, they're going to be a believer or non-believer, and where you spend eternity is dependent on that fact. Mm. They don't it's a long time. No, it's, it's, it's a it's, long it's, time coming. First, yeah. When, when they talk to me about and ask me a question, my one grandson asked me a lot of questions about construction and stuff like that. But if you ask me a question about anything else, don't do it unless you're ready for a sermon. <laughs> because 
if you ask me how something worked, or why is this, I try to tell them how it works. How it happened that way, because they're smart, they're supposed to be able to think, it should take some time to think. And that's what I try to share, help, you to help everybody to think about what it's really all about. Because we have to make that final decision, it will be a very personal decision. We're going to talk this afternoon about a decision about some churches, about how they're going to handle the current situation. And there we're going to be dealing with, Wesley started off with the, the quadrilateral. Tell me about the quadrilateral. What was the purpose? You, you Methodists, that was new to me. When I became a Methodist, I heard about the quadrilateral for the very first time. I never heard it at all. I never heard anything about it either. Wonderful, okay. <laughs> Wesley came around during the time of enlightenment. A fellow by the name of John Locke, remember him? He was a philosopher. Mm -hmm. He and several others had concepts together. They believed, and Wesley had came up with a quadrilateral. That's just a four-sided figure. Now it could be a square or a rectangle, whatever. And it, I interpret it as his way of discerning the will of God. Now I might be wrong about that purpose and that's what I was hoping one of you would tell me what it was. But the whole idea is he started with scripture. But then they said, well scripture isn't enough, you have, you have tradition. Well, I've done some wonderful graphics for this and I, they won't appreciate it if I draw it up there. But picture if you will a circle. And what's the longest line in this, uh, joining two points on the, on the surface of that circle? Diameter. The, it would be the diameter, that's correct. So if you were just using that to determine anything, in this case God's will, that's the longest line you can use. Oh. However, they add a tradition. Now, that's important. The Pope says the tradition is so important that it's, when it comes to scripture or tradition, tradition trumps scripture. That's the sitting pope, or reigning pope, or whatever the heck he does, says that now. But he qualified it with, he says, that's Catholic tradition. Okay? So if you take one point of that diameter, one end, and you make another diameter, and you go up, you can have two long, two diameters sharing the same one point, right? That's correct. Okay? Well, they decided, back in the days of enlightenment, that those two were not enough. That you had to have reason. Okay? So reason now joins those other two somehow. That comes a triangle. But, they said, experience. So that makes them both up here like this. And of course they can be like this, lopsided, depending on how much value you give each of those lines. So, if you give each one of them equal value, you have a circle that is, and inside that is a square inscribed. You got that? So you got four points touching the circle, right? By the way, if you take a circle and put it inside the square, you have the same four points, right? Good. Well, didn't Leonardo da Vinci do that? Huh? Didn't Leonardo da Vinci do that with his? Yeah, yeah I've, <clears throat> I don't know what his goal was, but yes, I've seen yeah. that. That picture, right. I, I, I mean, if I were to describe myself, it's very simple. I'm either a square peg in a round hole or a round peg in a square hole, <laughs> and, and I don't know fit. which it is. You but you get four points of contact either way. But now, if you've considered that as your way to discern the will of God, you're giving scripture a weight, you're giving tradition a weight, reason a weight, and experience. And after I've learned about that quadrilateral, I say, forget Tell it. it out. Well, we have, as we have in modern times, gone to consensus. We've added that. So now we've got a pentagon <laughs> inside that circle. And we can, I don't know how many other things we can add. That's where we failed. Pardon? That's where we failed. Just sure. goes back to scripture. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I agree with that. that. That is correct. But at any rate, but with all these opinions, the consensus lands us in a lot of trouble. But here we have 144,000 people, each with a mission. They were sealed by God. What does that sealing mean? 
They stay they pure. They belong to God and they're going to do God's will. They stay pure. They belong to God and he was protecting them. Mm -hmm. So that, and they were where? In the time of tribulation, yeah. right? So what were they doing? Now, here's where, show me scripture that tells me what they were doing, okay? I can tell you a lot of commentary that, they, that adds it, but I fall in this line and I, their job was to preach the gospel. Weren't they 12,000 from each of the, in chapter 7, 12,000 from each of exactly, the tribes? That's exactly the right. Tribes of that's Israel. what I think you have Pardon? to go back to 7. They're the tribes of it, from the tribes of Israel. Yeah. To teach, I want to be sure. I was, and I was tempted to believe. Well, it tells you in chapter seven that those hundred forty-four thousand were doing this all in Jerusalem. I've come to believe that no, that's probably not true. That some of them could have been all around the world, just yeah. like Jews have been all around the world. So some of them could be there. But the point is, it's during the tribulation. He sealed them for a purpose. One is so that they would be protected. Where else in our, a few chapters ago, we read about two other people who were sealed and they had a purpose, who were they? The witness, the two witnesses. The two witnesses, yeah. and they had a job, which was? To tell people to come. Preach the gospel for how long? 1,200 days. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Two hundred and sixty days. Three and a half years. Three and a half years. So we go three and a half years, and then it was over. The ceiling stopped. They weren't protected from being killed. Their job was done. These, however, when their job was done, they were called to heaven. At least we believe that. We don't know that they were have any reason to believe that they were killed. But it says they were redeemed from the earth. Redeemed yeah. from the earth. That's right. right. Okay. So we can I take from this that they were they taken, were, called right. up here without being killed. Yeah. But during the tribulation they're going to be saints who are going to be called up there too. But they're going to be killed first. So, but they're doing God's work to try and save people that were not taken up in the original. Yeah. Well, those 144,000, there are people who say that there are going to be many more of them than that. I don't know. I take scripture for what it means. If I look at it, if it gives me a number, I've got no reason to doubt that number. Sometimes, I guess... People look and say, that's not a big enough number. It's got to be bigger, okay? Like those Mormons. <laughs> well, I don't think there's going to be just 144 Mormons in heaven or 144 anybody else's in heaven. But during the tribulation, you're going to have people who are basically going to curse God, and you're going to have people who are going to praise them. Right. And I think they're trying to... God is trying to bring his people to them, I think. Right. And, you know, it's their choice. And that's a, you raised a good point a few minutes ago with the same, that same thought. And that is, by the, at this point in history, we had a rapture. Those are the people who, at that point in time, believed God, right. obeyed God, and believed God that. They believed Jesus is the Son of God. That's the basic belief. Believe that he is the Son of God. Number one, Jesus said, if you love me, if you are my friend, what do you do? You have, you obey Peter, my commandments. He, I'm the gatekeeper to God. Yes, I am the way. That's right. Yeah. But for you to do that, you're going to be his friend. And his friends, he tells us, you obey my commandments. Right. Right? Now, Jesus is who? The son. God son. And, he's the son of God, but he is also God, right? Right. Okay? He has shown himself both ways. I suggest to you that his commandments include the first ones in the Old Testament as well as love one another. Okay? The greatest of these. The greatest of these is love God first and love yourself and love your neighbor. All of that. That does not, in my mind, sweep out the Ten Commandments. When we stepped out the Ten Commandments as a church, we said, those Ten Commandments will never get you to heaven. 
and that's true. That's right. I believe that def definitely true. But that doesn't mean they weren't given for purpose, and it doesn't mean they're not to be obeyed. And we obviously, as a church, don't obey them. Go to number four, and you understand. I think it's number four, right? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? And I know that my preachers who argue with me that that's a Jewish thing. It isn't. Go back to Genesis 3, verse 2, or, or chapter 2, and verse 3. It'll tell you, it's when he finished creation, and he, he said something about the seventh day. He set it aside. He sanctified it. He made it holy. 2,000 years later, 2,025, 400 years later, he put it in stone in the Ten Commandments. That's when it became Teach Jewish. Okay. But it was existed way back at the first creation. Yeah. What that's worth. But anyway, his commandments. So all of the commandments we have to understand and try to obey. Because when we get to we, boy, is that presumptive word? I'm sorry. But when believers get to heaven, or what's our purpose there? God. Worship God. Worship God. Okay. Well, Lay we before worship. his feet and worship him, you know. We will worship him. That's going to be our natural tendency mm -hmm. out of gratitude for it, right? Yeah. But why did he have us? Why did he create us in the first place? For, for fellowship. fellowship. What? For fellowship with him. Relationship? Fellowship. fellowship. That's better than what I had. Fellowship. You think it's going to change when we get to heaven? No. No. You're still going to have fellowship Only with God. Only That's the whole point. He wants to have fellowship with us. With and he's filtered out by that time, using Revelation, he's filtered out a lot of the stuff that wouldn't make heaven very good. And he's even when we're talking about the millennium, a thousand years on earth, that lots of people forget about. People who are going to come into that from nations outside. And you really won't be allowed in. Unless they do some certain, do some things, which says suggested in the Old Testament that everybody's going to celebrate the Passover. Everybody, and those that don't, Chronicles. I won't tell you what chapter. Maybe seven, eight, nine, ten. One or the other. Second Chronicles. Anyway, he tells us that he's going to that everybody is going to obey and follow those rules, and those who don't, it's not going to rain. It won't rain on their nations. And that's just what the book says. And I'll, anytime I say something like that, and you want to challenge it, I'll write it down and I'll look it up and I'll bring it back to Scripture. <laughs> but I don't really remember Scriptures really very well. I, for some reason, did not learn them that way. I learned my Scripture by teaching different Sunday school classes over <coughs> almost 70 years now. And I don't remember all of them. I'll tell you that, especially not chapter and verse. But I do remember that I want to be on that right side at the end. And I hope that everybody else wants to do that too. I hope we have a reunion up there sometime. But we won't be as teachers because they won't need any teachers. They won't need any preachers. I mentioned that to preachers and they so I'm like, But it's true. God's going to be there by himself. We're going to all learn. Well, our end times are going to be when we die. Whether we come to the final, but we'll have an end time. Uh, probably sooner than our bodies will have an end time. Right. Well, our okay. spirits, our souls, uh, yeah. will never have an end time, according to the scripture. But the end times that they're talking about is not spirit. Is the end time of the earth and the final, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but it's not the end time of his, of his creation. It's no. the end time of the way of that creation. Right. A phrase came to me, what do you think of this? If I can do it right, somewhere I've got a note that says, this is the book of the end. The end of the book is the end, oh boy. But the they, the uh, it's the book of the end, but the end of the book is the beginning. That's yeah, right. The end of the beginning. Write it down, because so I'm going to forget <laughs> it. <I'm> gonna, <laughs> but I think that that's really what we have to consider it. And the world as we know it will be gone. There's no question to that. I think basically we're going to destroy ourselves anyhow. And you talk about the end times. There'll be war 
and probably a nuclear war, and that will be a what they call a what a nuclear winter, and nothing will grow, everything will be contaminated, and there'll be starvation. All of those be, things will happen. And then there'll be governments that will say, you have to follow what we're telling you to do, and we'll give you food. And to get food, you need a mark. Yep. So we can tell you when you come up to get your food, who deserves food, and who we can turn away. That's all true, but it's not all at the very end. Yeah. The very end will be here again. You read that the, the new holy city is going to be how big? 1,500 miles in one direction, 1,500 miles in another direction. That's a good base. 1,500 miles high. I've said before, 1,500 miles is just about from Key West to the Canadian border. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if you start at the East Coast, you go about halfway up across, right? So about 3,000 miles across. Maybe it's 3,600, but 3,000 miles, well, it's 1,500 miles. But the question in mind is, it's so high. And I've got that head kind of a head, a cube, you know. But well, somebody yes. put in my mind, it doesn't have to be a cube. It could also be a great pyramid. Wow. You measure that by 1,500 feet high. Isn't, isn't it described, though, as, I know it's here, but it's described as, as a square. As a square. The bottom is described as a square. No, the whole thing was described. Well, good. Find it that way. I'd like to, I'd like to look at that for sure, because I'd don't. i like it to be one way, and I'm square-headed, so I'd like it to be that way. Well, we should cover that. I mean, it's in here. Yeah. About having we'll get to there. It's okay, <laughs> so it gives you something to look up and square, square the old I don't guess right. it really makes any difference. We just want to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. Well, actually, the triangle has some good thoughts to it because if you were God, you wanted to live with us. Let's face it, even the best believers, after a while, they'd be like, we're going to be like, maybe not. Maybe I'm stretching it. Remember what Franklin said about visitors? Yeah. After three days. After but we won't be days, the days. it won't be the same after way there. After a week or whatever. So, look, look at it. It won't be the we same way stand, there. We can stand yes. each other for an hour, and maybe another hour during the week. But you know, we never need a bath again in heaven, you know. Could, we're going to be clean. We're you know, I, I, it's funny, but you know how the flickers, the, how the, our garments will be spotless. Well, you know how the three thousand when they were saved, and how the the, the the little pieces of fire they came down, the Holy Spirit. In my mind, that's how I think we're going to be. Those little flickers, and we won't be, and we'll still recognize each other. But that's my interpretation of how God has showed it to me. Well, again, of the <laughs> many choices of people that I read. We will have a person. We'll still have our personalities. We will yeah, still be yeah. that person. It's the spirit that's there. Yeah, but the personality presents differences, right? Yes, that's right. But eventually, we'll get a body. Yes, like yeah. Jesus. Well, I think you'd be kind of boring if we didn't have a personality. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You'd be boring if you did, right? Didn't right. you just say that? Yeah. Yeah. But if you have a personality and you get two people together long enough, you have a difference. Yeah, yeah you've been married long enough to know what I mean. Absolutely. You have differences. And you get three or four or millions of people. So would you think God That's might only if you have a Baptist the in the house. One? <laughs> but anyway, we didn't get, off, get an awful far. One of the things that I want to mention is that in going to the different places here, I can read a direct statement that says, obviously, that ceiling will not be literal. Mm -hmm. well, if it's not literal, how are other people going to know yeah. that it is that way? It says it is. Okay. I, but, my God, say it definitely will be literal. Yeah. That one says, no, it can't be. I don't know and I don't care. As long as that, you know, as long as the angel puts it there, you don't know 
Okay, I'm, it's I'm okay with that. Me. But well, let's see. I guess we will get to the angels, but not today. That's the verses six on from there. But we had the verses we're talking about are people, 140,000 people who had a job. They did their job, which was spread the gospel. With that 144,000, because of that 144,000, many <coughs> multitudes will come out of the tribulation. Some of them will have the trip as easy. They will have to lose their heads because they will have to follow God in a very hostile environment without having the benefit of being sealed by Jesus. And so far, what we've learned in this book is that the best and easiest way off this earth is the rapture. Mm -hmm. And the ticket to the rapture is belief in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Living according to his commandments is what we would want to do as out of gratitude, but believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for us, so that we are guiltless. Every now and then I like to look at that and realize that at least for that brief moment of realization I am guiltless. Because the next minute I know I'm going to do something that makes me guilty. It's just the way it is. <laughs> have a thought that doesn't go along or whatever. Anybody else have something they would like to close with? An announcement only that all of you know, I think the answer to is that there is a meeting at Lakewood Church at 3 o'clock this <laughs> afternoon and at 7 o'clock tonight. Um, Who's going to meet? Pardon? Who's going to meet? Who's going to meet? Okay. 